You are being cooked so slowly, you won't notice it until it's too late. Don't you realize that the temperature of the water is rising? What are you? Are you frogs? If we are all being cooked so slowly, nobody notices it. What's the problem? The Pentagon wants game devs to help build AI fighter Jet Starper will test the algorithms in simulated dogfights. Military research agency DARPA wants video game developers to help it develop AI fighter jets. The Pentagon's so-called Mad Science Wing is seeking their support for its Air Combat Evolution ACE, program. ACE aims to build the trust of fighter pilots in automated combat by testing algorithms in close-range aerial battles, better known as dogfights. But before they're dodging enemy jets for real, the algorithms need to be trialed in simulations. Read, Pentagon unveils toothless ethical principles for using AI in war. Lieutenant Colonel Dan Javorsk, who also goes by the cuddly nom de guerre of animal, envisions the algorithms guiding an aircraft's maneuvers so human pilots can focus on the higher level context intent and sentiment challenges of future battles. For this AI human teaming to work though, the human pilot has to be able to trust the AI to handle tactical air combat tasks, like dogfighting. And here's where the need for trustable AI dogfighting algorithms becomes apparent. Pilots trust things that work. To earn their trust, DARPA is seeking proposals from developers at businesses, universities and even the entertainment industry, where Animal noted that AI can already play realistic video games at expert human levels. DARPA and developers. DARPA is best known for developing deadly weapons such as the Agent Orange herbicide that still haunts Vietnam, as well as laying the foundations of the Internet. But it's also spent decades working on AI programs like ACE. ACE will initially focus on high-speed, high-G dogfights as they're more straightforward operations than Hollywood has led us to believe. This is because they involve clearly defined objectives, measurable outcomes, and aircraft dynamics that have inherent physical limitations, which makes dogfights a good test case for more complicated combat scenarios. Alpha dogfight trials that pit algorithms against in each other in simulations of 111 airborne battles are already underway. Once the algorithms have shown T for more on this story, visit the news article link. are becoming increasingly sophisticated. The latest battlefield technology is starting to look more like a computer game with wirelessly connected soldiers communicating via sound and vision to drones carrying satellite-linked Wi-Fi hotspots and given orders by commanders that could be on the other side of the world. But the weapons of the future won't need soldiers or commanders to operate them because they will be able to make the decision of what or whom to target themselves using artificial intelligence. 
The Pentagon is spending billions on developing a new generation of lethal autonomous weapons or laws like robotic fighter jets, missiles that decide what to attack and ships that hunt enemy submarines. For now, remote weapons like UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles are directed by humans from the safety of cubicles often hundreds or thousands of miles away from a conflict zone. And as such, any decision to use lethal force is always made by a person. But before we start thinking Skynet is going to take over and we'll have Terminators roaming around, we are still a long way from the Hollywood version of AI. Although we have seen the latest generation of robots like the Boston Dynamics Atlas and its uncanny ability to walk and move like a human, we won't be seeing an army of robotic soldiers anytime soon. Whilst we think of AI being used with the latest hardware, the United States Air Force is working on using older aircraft refitted with autonomous controls. The project, which is called Loyal Wingman, sees retired F-16s reused and fitted with enough autonomy so that they could fly alongside the latest F-35s and take cues from a human pilot in another aircraft, just as if a real wingman were there. And probably before driverless cars will make it onto the public roads. Autonomous missiles are an area which are already in use with systems like the British Fire and Forget Brimstone missiles. Once it has been primed with target information, it can work on its own to select the best target and cooperate with up to 24 other missiles to coordinate a staggered attack against swarms of enemy vehicles or boats. And if it can't find a target, it will self-destruct. Drones are another big area for military AI. The Israel Aerospace Industries HAROP is a small anti-radiation drone, which is also called the Suicide Drone. It can stay airborne above a battle area for up to six hours, looking for a specific radio transmission, like a radar source or an enemy air defense system. But in theory, could look for things like a specific signal from a mobile phone. The HAROP will then home in on the signal and deliberately crash into it and destroy its target with its onboard warhead. Meanwhile, DARPA, the military research arm of the Pentagon, has also unveiled the Sea Hunter, an autonomous surface vessel that is designed to stay at sea for months and track even the quietest submarines anywhere in the world. Because it's designed not to have any human crew during its operation, it must navigate busy shipping lanes and interact with an intelligent human adversary all by itself, then communicate the data back to its control center or take the appropriate action if it were to be armed. Though these systems can work in an autonomous mode, the new generation of AI weapons will take this to the next stage. Instead of being shown a target or partially remote controlled, these new weapons will go and look for targets and decide whether or not to destroy them without any human intervention. Recently, DARPA showed a system using a drone that could be bought from Amazon. When loaded with new AI software, it becomes a robot that can then hunt and identify armed men with AK-47s in a mock-up of a Middle Eastern village at a military testing range in the US. It was even capable of finding armed men when they were hidden in the shadows. If this system were to be armed like the Harop or be able to guide a missile to the target, it could become a formidable hunting system. This sort of thing was once a preserve of Hollywood, but it will be controlling the future autonomous weapons within years rather than decades. These new weapons would offer unmatched speed and precision over any human-controlled system, and is now being called the biggest step change since the creation of gunpowder and nuclear weapons. Although this technology will give the edge to the US and their allies, that may be short-lived, as others are investing heavily in this area, and unlike the development of the atomic bomb that required technologies that were very difficult to create, this is mostly software driven, which means it can be a lot easier to develop given the programming resources. Once this has been done, they could be cheaply mass produced by any significant military power, 
which also means they could easily find their way into the hands of rogue states or extremists. Aerial vehicles like drones, UAVs and missiles will be the first to use this, but there are already calls for such weapons to be banned because of the problems over their ethical and legal position. If an autonomous weapon committed a war crime, who would be responsible if no human made the decision? Some say that lethal autonomous weapons will decrease casualties because they can be programmed to follow the rules of engagement rigorously and analyse the situation logically. They don't have emotions, they don't get tired, stressed or distracted like a human combatant could and therefore they are less likely to make mistakes and kill civilians. are being cooked so slowly you won't notice it until it's too late. Don't you realize that the temperature of the water is rising? What are you? Are you frogs? If we are all being cooked so slowly nobody notices it, what's the problem?